Coworkers. Can't work with them. Can't work without them. Did you know the average person will spend 90,000 hours at work over a lifetime? 91% of us spend more than 30 hours a week with colleagues, while only 52% of us spend more than 30 hours a week with family. That means we're spending a lot of time with our co-workers. So why is this important? Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, work relationships are essential to not only improving productivity at work and job satisfaction, but overall happiness. We've all been there. We've all had those crazy co-workers, those horrible bosses, and times where we just rather be like hit by a car than go to work. I know that seems like an exaggeration, but I literally was having this conversation with one of my good friends the other day where we were like, remember that time when you used to have to go into the office or do something, go to a job that you hated, and you secretly wished that you could get hit by a car or like something could happen to you, you would get into some kind of accident or you might get sick so that you just wouldn't have to go to work. And we started laughing and it just made me one, so thankful that I never have to be in that situation again. But in general, a toxic or unhappy work situation or work environment can really take a toll on your morale as a you know employee but also even your personal life like it really can lead to depression many times I know that I've been depressed working in environments that I didn't enjoy and of course there's always about there's always a question about whether you're doing what you love that's like a whole other topic topic and if you want me to make a video on that i'd be glad to do it so please let me know in the comment section below and the other thing the other component to that though is working with people that you like so let's face it we spend a lot more time with co-workers than sometimes we do with our own family and friends and they're kind of like that family that you didn't choose but also you didn't even know that you had like somehow they're kind of there all the time and you don't really know what to call them they're not like your friends but they're not you know your family they're not acquaintances and they're co-workers right now before I start there are some beautiful things that can happen from the work environment and I met really great people that have become like my mentors and good friends over the years but there are those really tough dynamics that sometimes we have to deal with so I just wanted to share six ways that you can improve your work relationships so that you can get people to respect you now my first tip which may seem like a no-brainer but it is to be competent if you want people to respect you, you need to give them a reason to respect you, right? So you need to go in there and crush it when it comes to work. You need to be able to deliver and deliver on time. When people see that they can count on you and that you produce good work, then they will inherently learn to trust you and to even seek you as like a, a voice of authority at work. So my next piece of advice is to be professional. Now, what does that mean? I know sometimes we can deal, be dealing with a very frustrating situation and we just wanna like scream or strangle someone or, you know, yell, but it's just not helpful at all. I work in an organization where it's very bureaucratic and sometimes you know it takes forever to get anything done it's a very tedious process and you know you just want to like say something that you might later regret ben told you to finish the website and if you don't do it i swear to god i'm gonna murder you in your sleep i'm gonna get a melon baller and scoop your eyes out and eat them but i ask you to refrain from doing that um because you know, what I admire most from the people that I work with is that no matter how th frustrating things can be, 
they never lose their cool they are always professional and in fact it helps if you you can infuse the situation with humor with positivity and just if you're not sure how you will react and you know you you know react very easily just take a step back before you respond let yourself cool down before you even respond to the situation because after we've cooled down then we realize then we're more likely not to overreact and at the end of the day it's not that serious like you're probably not saving lives with the work that you do and even if so reacting negatively um, with anger frustration is only going to inflame the situation make the matters worse my next piece of advice is to build rapport as frustrating as it can be to work with some people sometimes know that everyone is human right so most of the time in my experience like even the most difficult people that I've worked with I've realized that what makes them challenging to work with generally has little to do with me and I think sometimes we internalize their behavior and we think oh it's because you know they don't like me or they don't think I'm competent or you know it's always something that we may turn inwards and think it's about us but in fact the reason why many times people behave the way they do is because of their own issues and their own reasons especially people who tend to bully others at work who you know are not performing as high as they should be it's always because of uh, something that's going on inside of them and it's not necessarily your job to fix it or address the situation but it's it's definitely something that you shouldn't feel you shouldn't take personally and and while that can create a barrier to you know having a good working relationship know that there are things that you can do i think that you know it's important to try to build rapport with your co-workers to to be positive with them so if you're always not reacting or responding if you're always positive they can never say something like oh this person you know they can never have a reason to pinpoint and say like this person was was mean or unprofessional or this person you know can't keep their cool so if you're always positive about the situation especially in a very difficult work situation it kind of just helps the person to remember you as someone who is like calm cool and collected which is extra points for you another way to build rapport is to show gratitude right obviously you know thanking someone and showing appreciation for the work that others are doing being inclusive many times um, I've even noticed I do it myself now because I've noticed other colleagues of mine do it but when when we're working in a group setting and they say we put this together or we did this or this is our you know thoughts like when they frame it as the collective we as opposed to I when we're when it comes to like group work it really kind of even if it maybe I just contributed like one percent and they did most of the work or something or maybe if I dropped the ball and you know they they had to like we weren't able to meet some kind of deadline let's say I've just had co-workers who take ownership and collective ownership by saying we and it really has made me feel like safe that I can trust them and it's also made me um, feel like yeah we are part of a team we are doing this together whether today I contribute only 1% and tomorrow I do like 95% it's a give and take and not everyone's workload is always going to match up at the same time or time schedule their timetable so sometimes you do have to step in and help a bit more and sometimes you can rely on others because they also know that there have been times when you have um, had to step in so you know it's never like worrying about like you know tit for tat like are you sharing the workload perfectly sometimes you have to watch 
your colleagues back and hoping that by doing that a couple times that they will also return the favor obviously not to a detriment of your work or anything like that but in general you know don't be afraid to help out your colleagues and to frame it and show them demonstrate that you are in it together as a team <laughs> now this sounds kind of funny but it's to break bread literally break bread like literally go out to eat together whether it's just you and another co-worker whether it's you with your your team but somehow I found that every time that I've shared meals with my co-workers in different environments like different um, companies or organizations I work for it's always brought us together something about being able to share meals with someone kind of takes us out of the office setting or work you know work environment it kind of just brings us to allows us to be human you know during that time we talk we don't always talk about work some of course many times we can talk about work but we also get to learn a little bit more about each other on a, on a personal level even if it's down to like our eating habits right or we're sharing a dish together you know it just like I think tricks our brain to um, thinking oh, okay it's like you know friends and family where you like share food together and you know can just discuss things along the table around the table so definitely if you can um, share a meal or two with your colleagues I know now it's hard because of COVID but if you can still find a way to meet for um, you know coffee or lunch you know I definitely encourage it or dinner happy hour is always great or if you're on a work trip for instance I love to explore whenever I'm traveling even if it's a work trip I'll use that one evening or one afternoon that I have free and I'll just want to go explore the the new environment the new country or city that I'm in so what I found that has worked for me and like our team you know, share something that you're passionate about so if you really like to explore and you want to check this out you know offer it up to your co-workers and be like hey I'm going to check this out would anyone like to come and by you taking the lead and organizing it you know it's also showing like you have the initiative but also you're again trying a new experience with your co-workers so definitely you know I think the more that you can see the human side of your co-workers and vice versa I think the better your relationship will be now if you don't have that opportunity because of COVID and you're working from home like many of us you know even just let's say you're working on a team project even like setting up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one colleague that you have to work closely with in a group or you need information from just having that rapport with them via email or video call can help to build rapport in those times that you you do get to have those one-on-one -on -one interactions with your co-workers you know it's great to ask them how was their weekend or how was their new year or yeah how are they dealing with this covid new strain of covid to infuse the conversation with like non-work related things because then you get to see more of a glimpse of who they are and it really does go a long way in building the rapport now this leads me to my next piece of advice which is to have patience so again these dynamics can sometimes be daunting but realize it a, a relationship any relationship even like your the relationship you have with your best friends or your family or you know other co-workers that you love like it all took time to develop so especially the more challenging dynamics at work the more challenging relationships at work realize that it takes time to kind of nurture those relationships because most of the times you know the reason why you may be met in a way that's negative from others at work is because maybe they don't trust you yet maybe they don't really know you yet so that's gonna take time for them to see 
the caliber of your work, see that you're someone that's trustworthy, see that you're a, a multi-dimensional human being, and yeah, see that maybe there are some things that you guys actually have in common. So yeah, just give it time, be patient, be positive, and I'm pretty sure that those kinks that you have with your colleagues will work themselves out with time that doesn't mean that they, they're gonna be your best friends sometimes there's just some colleagues that we just are don't see eye to eye but with time you at least learn to to work together and at least gain their respect i know that happened to me one time there was one colleague that i just did not enjoy working with and i think the feeling was mutual and i really think at first it was because this colleague felt threatened that I was like in some way but she was very competitive and I'm not very competitive when it comes to work I, I focus on my own work and that's it but she was very competitive and it just kind of made a very hostile situation but you know as luck would have it I had to work with her like on three different assignments and I just had to be patient and implement all the things that I mentioned to you earlier and with time, including sharing meals together. And with time, uh, you know, our relationship got better because she saw that I wasn't a threat. She saw that, you know, I did good work and that I did care about her as a coworker. And yeah, and she got to kind of get to know me more on a personal level and vice versa. And in the end, it became an amicable relationship. Is that someone that I necessarily want to hang out with? No. Although I've met like amazing coworkers that are now my very good friends. But yeah, you just, everything takes time. So just be patient, stay calm, cool, collected, be positive, and just be someone that people want to be around without having to be inauthentic, right? Just be yourself, but you know, it's hard not to want to be around someone who's always positive and who gets the work done. So, okay, so you've got the patience, you've been positive, you've been building rapport with your colleagues, you've been doing the work, you're doing everything you need to do. Now, the one other thing that I would like to say is to speak up. And this is something that I struggled with at work because Many times I was such a workhorse, so with time people saw that I got work done and you know, I could do the work. I was very competent at my job and I was very positive and could build a report and everything, but that didn't necessarily give me respect at work. And the reason why I didn't have that respect at work was because I wasn't speaking up, because I wasn't sharing my ideas and because I also wasn't having boundaries. I wasn't speaking up when I felt that things were not right at work or I wasn't treated right at work. So I know it can be extremely intimidating um, to speak up if it's like your boss or coworkers and you don't wanna appear like someone who's angry or you know, uncooperative and and you know sometimes i remember i wouldn't speak up in the beginning of when i started somewhere because i didn't even know what was going on like i was still learning it <laughs> figuring it out and i just didn't know exactly what i could contribute but i really encourage you that for you to speak up um try to share any ideas that you might have even if it's not like you know the the most like you know well-researched ideas but if you think you have something to contribute a small idea here or go back and do some research and try to bring something to the table showing that you can add value to the team but also that you respect yourself enough so that others will respect you now um i remember i'm gonna <laughs> share a, a interesting story i had a few years ago again i'm a consultant and I remember I had done my boss at the time a favor by taking on an assignment to help him 
get Sika's approval for this project we were working that he was working on. And so I had taken on, agreed to help him before he had gotten my contract um, ready. And he said that once we did this work that he could get my contract approved. I wasn't really too concerned about the contract because I knew that I would get it eventually. I always do. But, you know, I did basically work for two months for him for free. And at one point I had asked him, can you, so what about now that we finish this assignment, can, what's going on with my contract? And before he would always say, oh yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's in process, we're working on it. And then um, he actually was like, oh, like, can you do like a, a unpaid internship? Because we were, I was actually supervising a intern at the time. So he tried to make that joke. And I was so offended by that joke that, you know, it just really kind of solidified in me that, you know, if you were, if you don't speak up for yourself, people are going to take advantage of you at work. And, you know, because, just because you do great work doesn't mean that that necessarily gives you, um, gives you, earns you respect at work. So I was very upset with that. And instead of me like flying off the handle and getting upset and, you know, saying something back, I took a step back and I thought about it that afternoon. And at the end of the day, I wrote him an email and I basically said, you know, that I would like to continue with the assignment, but it's just not feasible for me to continue to work for, you know, two months without payment. And sure enough, and I was like, I'm willing to continue working once my contract is ready. And sure enough, um, the next day, what took two months to do, the next day he sent me an email apologizing and he immediately had my contract ready. And when I saw him again, he told me he apologized again. It's like he didn't even realize. He was like, oh, you know, I just didn't, you know, because he's not a consultant, he's a full-time employee. So he didn't even realize like the situation how that situation was impacting me so this is just like one example but basically you know if you don't stand up for yourself then no one's going to stand up for yourself but you don't have to do it in a way that's antagonistic you can just clearly state what you need um, or what you want and I also find that by phrasing it in a way that is showing that basically you know how they dangle the carrot for you dangle the carrot back to them so by you showing like okay you would like me to do this well i'm happy to do this but in order for me to do this i need x y and z resources and so basically i have found that that works every time that's helped me get like higher payments it's helped me get my contracts cleared like paperwork that's been stalling it's helped me just get so many things like you know equipment that i've needed that i've been denied for a long time so if you can frame it in a way that's kind of like helping them or beneficial for them for them to help you like show them how it's beneficial for them to help you then it, it pretty much works every time and I guess the last thing about that is when you're able to speak up and show that not only do you have something to contribute of value to the team, but you also respect yourself, then it, it gets people to respect your time more. And so that you don't have to feel like you are, you know, doing work that, you know, you're not put in a situation that you feel is compromising you which can lead to low morale so definitely give those things a try and let me know um, how it goes and the last piece of advice that i have for you guys is to manage upwards and this is relates more to um, when your dynamic with maybe a boss or a supervisor but 
basically instead of you waiting for your boss to manage you to to give you work to kind of help you along a task to even do what is right by you you have to learn to manage up because managers are usually so busy or like focus on their own agenda that sometimes they don't have the time energy or care to manage down so managing up is just make sure that you get what you need and what you want to get work done so if you need resources then don't be afraid to ask for them but also you know be as resourceful as you can i like to when i'm doing my work i try to think about what are all the things that i can do on my own and research on my own so that i don't have to bother my my supervisor like if i have a question how can i find out the answer how can i you know if i need this resource that i need my boss to sign off on for instance then how what is the procedures that is needed to to get his approval or his or her approval so maybe i will present my boss then with all of the facts and be like this is what you need to do um steps a b and c so just trying to manage up to streamline the process and that will make you indispensable and the very last thing i will say is if you've tried all of these things and you have really put in the effort to to do all of the things that i've suggested and you still are struggling in your work environment after maybe like six months or so or you know you've been there longer and just nothing is changing then maybe that's a sign that you're not in the right work environment work environment i think is so huge and if you are just not in the, maybe it just means that you just don't have the right fit so definitely see if you can try to switch to another team another project and at the end of the day maybe that job or that industry is just not for you so don't be afraid to try something different okay guys well thank you so much for watching and yes again like subscribe hit the bell notification if you like this content and i will see you guys next time bye